Coming now to the equity segment of the balance sheet. Equity is the owner's residual claim on a company's assets after subtracting its liabilities. Sometimes this is also called net assets. And here are the various components of equity. You will notice that with equity, there are no rules defining how equity is valued because equity is simply the difference between assets and liabilities. We will study rules for measuring different kinds of assets. We will study rules for measuring different kinds of liabilities. And equity is simply the differential. However, with equity, we need to understand the different categories. And those categories, at least the major ones, are shown over here. Contributed capital is the money that has actually been contributed by the owners, either at the start of the company or during the life of the company. So this is money that is coming from outside the company, given by owners to the company. And obviously, owners then have an ownership claim based on the money that they have contributed to the company. This is called common stock or issued capital. It may have a par value or stated value. A company needs to disclose the number of shares which are authorized, issued and outstanding. When a company is created, it has to state how many shares are authorized. Let's say that a company is started and the number of shares authorized is 100 million. This means that the company has the authorization to issue up to 100 million shares. It does not mean that 100 million shares will be issued immediately. Let's say that out of this 100 million, the company initially issues 40 million shares. So that is the amount of shares that have been issued. Notice that issued shares will have to be less than the number of shares authorized. A year later, a company might buy back 10 million shares. This buyback of shares is called a treasury stock operation. This is referred to as treasury shares. So we buy back 10 million treasury shares and what we are then left with is 30 million shares outstanding. So shares outstanding is 30 million. Earlier, when we talked about earnings per share calculation, we were actually calculating earnings per outstanding shares. So the outstanding shares are the shares that are being traded. And that is the critical item out of these three. Retained earnings refers to the earnings that a company has generated which have not been paid out as dividends. Earnings that have not been paid out as dividends are retained within the company. And we've seen several examples up till now. A company might generate 100 million in profits, of which it might pay out 20 million as dividends and retain 80 million. This 80 million would be called retained earnings. Next year, a company might retain another 80 million, which would create a total of 160 million worth of retained earnings. The reason this is called equity is that the 100 million really belongs to shareholders. And rather than take it out, they are putting it back in the company. So they are plowing the money back or reinvesting the money or retaining the money. Hence, it is considered part of equity. Accumulated other comprehensive income, we have already talked about this. There are items such as available for sale securities, where the gains, the unrealized gains on AFS are not passed through the income statement. They directly increase equity. And their increase is reflected in the component of equity called other comprehensive income. There are three other items that cause OCI to go up. And I have asked you to memorize those three items in a earlier reading. Non-controlling interest is the minority interest. If you own a company, let's say you have 80% ownership, then there is this other party which has 20% ownership. That 20% ownership is shown as the non-controlling interest or minority interest. That is also equity. And finally, 
preferred shares or preference shares, these are classified as equity or financial liabilities depending on the characteristics. Now, if we have preferred shares that are redeemable or that are going to be redeemed at a certain price by a certain date, then the preferred shares have to be classified as liabilities. On the other hand, perpetual preferred shares are generally classified as equity. To understand the major components of equity, let's look at this simple example. At the start of year one, owners contribute 100. So that is the issued capital. Among other assets, the company purchases financial assets categorized as AFS worth 100. So during year one, the net income is 20, which is retained. The value of financial assets goes up to 12. During year two, there is a treasury stock operation worth 20. Net income is 40, which is retained. Financial assets go up to 15. You need to show the relevant equity components at the end of year one and end of year two. Pause the video before you look at the solution. Here is what you should come up with. The issued capital at the start and end of year one is 100,000. During year one, there was no treasury stock operation. The retained earnings for year one are 20 because we said the entire net income of 20 is retained. Accumulated other comprehensive income, so started from zero. And our AFS started at 10, went up to 12, so the increase is 2. OCI, therefore, is 2. Total equity at the end of year 1 is 122. Then for end of year 2, issued capital stays the same. But in year 2, we have a treasury stock operation worth 30. So this is minus 30. A treasury stock operation is always a negative. It's reducing the number of shares outstanding. Accumulated retained earnings goes up to 60 because we started year 2 at 20 and then in year 2 we have earnings of 40 and this entire amount is retained so the accumulated retained earnings equals 60 other comprehensive income for year 2 is 3 because we went from 12 to 15 so the OCI for year 2 is 3 the accumulated OCI is 2 plus 3 which is 5. The total equity at the end of year 2 is simply a sum of these items and that is 135. The statement of changes in equity presents information about the increases or decreases in a company's equity over a period. IFRS requires the following information in the statement of changes in equity. So you can read this. I think US GAAP is a little easier to understand. US GAAP requirement is for companies to provide an analysis of changes in each component of equity as shown in the balance sheet. And to understand this, let's look at an excerpt from Apple's consolidated changes in shareholders equity. You don't need to understand every detail here, but you should try to get the main point. This first row represents the start of the period. At the start of the period, the common stock is 7,177. This represents the amount that has been contributed by owners. The retained earnings equals 15,129. This is the total amount of earnings that have been retained up till this date. The accumulated OCI on this date is minus 9 and you add up these items, you get total shareholders equity at the start equal to 22,297. The bottom represents the situation at the end of the period. The common stock is 8,200 and 
locked in retained earnings 23353 three, which is a much larger number compared to the start of the period oci went up to 77 this is actually accumulated oci and note that the total shareholders equity went up from 22000 to approximately 31640 now where did this change come from what you can notice from the bottom line is that a significant contribution came from retained earnings which is good but let us evaluate this a little more when you look at common stock the company has issued new stock the company has some stock based compensation and then there is common stock issued under stock plans new shares are issued which is why this column is going up the most interesting item here is that retained earnings are going up a lot because of this high net income and this shows that the company is doing well so there is a major element right here with oci if you recall i asked you to remember the four items that contribute to oci and you see them over here the one that you need to understand is changes in unrealized loss on afs securities so notice that in this period there must have been substantial gains on the afs front which is why the oci is going from negative territory to substantially positive territory other oci elements also had a contribution but a negative contribution now there are a few other minor items here but i don't think you really need to get into the details the key points have been addressed